Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidil mursalin seyyidina Muhammed. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem teslimen kethira. Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. This is Imam Zey Shakir and I'm here on behalf of the Muslim Community Center MCC in Pleasanton, California. Uh, with the fourth installment of our Ramadan class, The Purpose of Life. And we established through the first three sessions that the purpose of life is that we live in this world, but we live for the next. And living in this world, we are exposed to tests, trials, and tribulations. And that is the nature of this life. To expect otherwise is to expect something that is not going to happen. It is not going to happen, brothers and sisters. So in our last installment, we left off at the idea of these two types of trials. The trial of doubt, fitna to shubha, and the trial of, of lust. Fitna to Shahwa. And uh, this was based primarily on the insights of the great Damascan scholar Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah. And he mentioned that the trial of doubt is far greater. The trial of doubt is far greater. We mentioned that one of the reasons is far, uh, we should say, graver, as opposed to greater, is far graver. Uh, because when one is afflicted with doubt, repentance becomes very uh, difficult because doubt breeds arrogance. I think my idea is the superior idea. As Iblis said, he's described as arrogant. With the call of Rabbuka lil malaikati shjuru li Adam, fasajadu illa Iblis. So he was ordered to prostrate himself to Adam. He refused to do so. He was arrogant. He arrogated himself. And he was amongst those who rejected faith. So uh, the, and, and then subsequently, we mentioned this last week, when he's asked, why didn't he prostrate himself? So he refused. He's asked, why did you refuse? What did he say? And a min. I'm better than him. You created me from fire while you created him from clay. And so his arrogance builds and he starts justifying and rationalizing. And so repentance becomes extremely difficult because you're right, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I, why should I have prostrated when I'm better than him? And why am I better? Because you made me from fire. It's beautiful, it's orange, it's yellow, it's blue, it's white, it's red. You made him from black clay. I'm better. So the arrogance builds and the arrogance becomes a wedge between the person, in this case, Iblis and repentance. Whereas Adam, the uh, tribulation, the trial or test of lust, it doesn't breed arrogance. It usually breeds humility. How could I be so weak? How could I give in to that? Why couldn't I restrain those appetites? And so it, being that it, it leads to this rebuking attitude, in many instances, it becomes easy to repent. And so Iblis, Abba was takbara wa kanamil al-kafirin. The same page in the Quran later on, فَتَلَقَّ آدُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Adam, Learn to repent. Adam had a penitent spirit, and Allah turned to him in repentance and accepting his repentance. And so that's one of the reasons the trial of doubt is so much graver 
than the trial of lust. And then he says, Ibn Muqayyim, Rahimahullah, Fa'anullah bihi ajikum ajma'in. He says that the early Muslims, they used to uh, warn against two types of people. The people who, pos who follow their, their vain inclinations and their vain whims, sometimes translated as their caprice, sahibul hawa. And then their, their caprice, their whims become a trial for them. Why? Because they can't divorce themselves from them. That's the first type. The second type is one who has great amounts of dunya. And the, the dunya that they possess blind them to the hereafter. So there's so much dunya dazzling them, they're blind to the hereafter. They never take time to think that there's a life beyond this life. One of the things the COVID virus has done is made a lot of people put the brakes on and think, what is this all about? What is this life all about? Why? Because the prospect of an unannounced death is very real. You know, you're, you're fine one day and five or six days later you're gone. So may Allah, may Allah bless us to prepare for that eventuality and not to be blind by the world. Again, he reiterates that one of the greatest trials lies in our relationships with each other. It's one of our greatest trials. If you consider the uh, verse in the Quran, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim tu'minuna billahi wa rasulih wa tujahiduna fi sabili lahi bi amwalikum wa anfusikum dalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'lamun So, O you believers, shall I direct you to a commerce that will save you from a terrible punishment, a painful punishment. And then he mentions the investment. تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ Believe firmly in Allah and His Messenger and strive in the way of Allah. Excuse me with your wealth and with your, with your lives, that is best for you if you but knew. But to jahiduna fi sabili illahi bi amwadikum wa anfusikum. Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, commenting on this verse, he said that there are five basic types of jihad, or struggle. The jihad, two are mentioned here. But to jahiduna fi sabili la bi amwalikum anfusikum, the jihad with your wealth. This Ramadan, uh, most of you certainly, I have seen so many online fundraisers because people are coming to the masjid and the masjid still have staff, their personnel, excuse me, all the Milan Minashaytun regime to be paid. They have services that they render, those services cost money. And so the normal three to five thousand dollars in some messages coming through the donation box every Friday isn't coming. So they have to do, uh, the messages have to do the online fundraiser to, to appeal for support. Uh, and, and in any case, the Allahumma sallu rasulillah. Oh, that, that's the jihad with the wealth, excuse me. So, what to jihaduna fi sabiliya bi amwalikum. So, those fundraisers are inviting you to struggle with your wealth. 
a lot of people furloughed, lost their jobs, but that's not an excuse not to spend. You have a dollar. You have a dollar. You're going to buy something you really don't need. So instead of buying uh, whatever, the bag of mint chocolate chip ice cream sandwiches, pass it up and give that five dollars to the to the to the cause that's inviting you to spend and you'll see the return many fold from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then and fusikum and then with your lives and so from time to time we might have to literally put our lives on the line but that doesn't happen every day and for some of us it doesn't happen within the person's lifetime but the person should be prepared uh, observing all the limits set by Allah and the Messenger, if that eventuality were to come, and we don't we don't pray for it, we don't pray for it. So, oh, bring them on. That's not a Muslim. A Muslim follows the prophetic advice. لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو واسألوا الله العافية. Don't long to meet any enemy. Ask Allah for well-being. Ask Allah for safety, ask Allah for security, ask Allah for well-being. Because as they say, war is hell. War is hell. And only a fool wishes for it. Ask Allah for well-being. We that muhum But if you do meet them, be patient. So it says these type. The third, the jihad between the person and himself or herself. A jihad bainahu wa baina nafsihi. A jihad between himself or herself and their nafs. And this jihad is struggling to elevate through the degrees that the nafs travels as it moves towards human perfection to the extent possible using that term metaphorically. From the nafs al-amartum bisu, nafs al-shahwaniya bahimiya, as it's sometimes called, the nafs al the nafs al the nafs al mutma'inna, the nafs al radiya the nafs al mardiya the nafs al kamila And so there's a struggle to overcome the obstacles that prevent us from this elevation from ascending through these ranks. And it is a struggle because it is not easy. If it were easy, more people would be doing it properly. But it's not easy, so you find very few people undertaking it properly. And then the, the jihad, the struggle between the person and shaitan. And this is an ongoing struggle. And 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 we have to engage this battle, brothers and sisters. Otherwise, the, the advocates of evil will overwhelm us and overwhelm this world. We have to struggle. We have to struggle against shaitan. In the shaitan, he is unto you an enemy treat him like an enemy. Sometimes we take the, the whole concept too lightly. That should not be our lot. And then, al-jihad bainahu wa bain al So, and then the, the jihad between the person and non-antagonistic elements. So the jihad with the, the nafs, use, that's against antagonistic elements. But there's a jihad against the non-antagonistic elements. Your wealth and your children are fitna. Your children, we love them. They're not doing anything to us except not listening in some instances. But they're described as a trial. And in that they're a trial, there is a struggle we have to overcome, we have to undertake to successfully manage and conquer that trial. And that's general in all of our affairs. And, and so 
the non-antagonistic elements, the wife, the husband, the parent, the children, the neighbor, the neighbor unto that neighbor. We're all in these uh, relationships and these relationships are the proving ground for us. We made some of you as a trial to others, will you not be patient? And so negotiating uh, <clears throat> these trials requires patience. Maintaining those relationships requires patience. Doing the things we must do as we engage in these struggles requires patience, brothers and sisters. May Allah grant us abundant amounts of patience. So they counsel each other with truth and they counsel each other with patience. So may Allah Ta'ala give us patience. Then he says, Rahimullah, he says, they used to say, beware of uh, this, uh, that the origin of every trial. Uh, is lies in giving preference to one's empty opinion over the revealed law and giving preference to one's whims and inclinations over one's intellect. That's the source of every tribulation. So giving preference to one's empty opinion. And this is rampant in our day and time. Oh, I think Islam should be like this. I don't think Islam should have this, so we're not even going to follow that. Uh, I think Islam should contain A, B, C, or D. So I think, that's the hawa. I think, in my opinion, giving preference to that over the revelation. So the revelation comes, and it comes to eradicate falsehood, not to capitulate to falsehood. So, truth comes. And batil is ruined, is repelled, repulsed. In the, so, <clears throat> Falsehood by if truth comes, falsehood perishes. Falsehood by its very nature is doomed to perish. But its nature is only revealed in the light of truth. And so we have to be the messengers, the advocates of truth, who bring truth to the people so that people can dispel the depths of darkness and falsehood that envelop us. This is the beauty and power of our religion, brothers and sisters. So, and then he says, so the origin of every tribulation lies either in the giving of the prioritizing of one's empty opinion to the divine law, the revealed law, and one's uh, whims and caprice over one's intellect. And so he said the first, this is the origin or the foundation of the trial of doubt. So giving priority to one's opinion over the revealed law. So the tribulation of doubt is rooted in that. You know, I think Islam is homophobic. So we need to have a more progressive Islam. And so I think is doubt what's been revealed in the Quran, in the Sunnah, what have the ulama of the Ummah agreed upon in a particular issue? So we have to give prioritizing, we have to prioritize the revealed law over our opinion. You know why? Because our opinion today is, is harder than a flapjack in a skittle under an intense fire with very little oil in the pan 
100 years ago, our opinion would have been laughable. No one would have taken it serious. And we don't know what it's going to be 50 years from now. Because the, the public perception and the zeitgeist, if you will, the spirit of the time that plays a large part in determining whether our opinion is laughable or rather something to be taken serious, it changes. Whereas the law is unchanging reality, so the truths that are revealed in the law are permanent truths, indelible truths, and their power manifests itself, manifested itself in the past, is manifesting itself in the present, and will manifest itself in the future, inshallah ta'ala. So it says, so the first given priority to empty opinion over the divine law is the origin of the tribulation of doubt. And the second, uh, giving priority, priority to one's whims and caprices and personal opinions over one's, uh, uh, not personal opinions, just the whims and suggestions over the intellect is the origin of the fitna of lust. Why? Because leaving aside religion, most of the things that we long for that are sinful, after I said leave aside considerations of religion, uh, so scratch that. Most of the sinful things are extremely harmful to us, if not all of them, extremely harmful. So uh, we, we have a, a whim that, you know, I, I, I need to marry my secretary. If we think about it, it's like, whoa, whoa, this is crazy. What's this going to do to my family? How are my kids going to take this? You know, I, this woman is not a Muslim. Maybe she has some communicable disease or something. But the Akko goes out and we give priority to the Hawa. Yeah, this is good. She's a nice lady. She's single. She needs help. She has a couple kids. She's struggling. I could be the hero to save the day. Yeah, that's a great idea. No, give priority to the Akal over the Hawa. And you'll find the lust going away. You know, another example, uh, alcohol. You know, I, I should go to the party and have a drink. It can't be that bad. Then the intellect says, oh, wait a minute. You know, I don't, maybe someone put something in there. Maybe I'll become addicted to this stuff. Uh, maybe I'll get drunk and smash my car. So one starts thinking and then that lust starts to receive, receive, no, I'm not, I ain't drinking. That's crazy. Those people can drink all they want. I'm going to stick to the non-alcoholic eggnog. That's ridiculous. So we give priority to the aql over the hawa, and then the lust recedes as you start thinking about it. The secretary starts not looking so good. The prospect of the idea of drinking alcohol doesn't sound so inviting. Why? Because we thought it through. But when we prioritize the hawa, yeah, it couldn't be that bad. All of these people, they socially drink, and none of them have car accidents. None of them go home and they're involved in these heavy domestic violence situations. None of And so the hawa wins out over the intellect. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir. So then he says that the, the, the trial of lust, he said, this is repulsed with patience. The, the trial of lust is repulsed with patience. So when we, when we are patient, the trial of lust is conquered. Why, you know, oh, I, I want to do no. I need to step back. Everything's okay. 
I could, I could work hard, continue to work hard. I got to this point in the company. I don't need to go to the Christmas party and drink alcohol to get a, a, a higher promotion, a higher position. I'll just be patient and Allah will open something up for me. And so we, we with patience, we vanquish the trial or conquer the trial of lust. So, and then the trial of doubt is overcome by the trial of certainty. The trial of certainty, being absolutely certain. And again, this virus situation has made a lot of people really certain about things they questioned before. Gotten a lot of certainty. Allah give us tawfiq and taysir. And both of these qualities are the qualities of leadership. Patience and yaqeen, certainty. And so we want to equip ourselves with patience. But tawasaw bil haqq. But tawasaw bil sabr. Tawasaw bil haqq. They counsel each other with truth and they counsel each other with patience. And the truth is the foundation of certainty. So this is key to reposing the tribulation of doubt. And the patience is the key to reposing the tribulation of lust. These are just two secrets in Surah al -As. Imam Shafi rahimahullah mentioned if no other surah had been revealed in the Quran except Surah Al Asf, it would have it would have sufficed the people. So the the tribulation of doubt is repulsed with certainty, and the tribulation of lust is repulsed with patience. And when people can combine these qualities together. Those people are the people who will be given leadership. Those are the people who will be given leadership. And not because I want it to be so, but because Allah says it in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala mentions, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا that we made from them. This is a reference to the prophets from the Bani Israel, but the lesson is generally applicable. Ibra li umum al sabab. That the lesson to be taken from a verse in the Quran is based on the generality of the wording, not the specificity of the occasion of revelation. So specifically, this is about the prophets of Bani Israel, but generally it's applicable for all of us. So Allah says, minhum bi amrina. We made from them leaders who guide it by our command. Lamma sabaru after they patiently persevered. And so leadership, Allah tests us. Allah puts us through fire to see if we're worthy of carrying the responsibility of leadership. It's not just bam. And that's why no one hastens to take leadership in any level of institutional function without uh, unless they reflect deeply on it. Otherwise, they're doing more harm than good. They will inevitably do more harm than good. And so Allah says, we made from them leaders who guide it by our command after they patiently persevered. And they were absolutely certain concerning our signs. They were absolutely certain concerning our science. So this is what it, this is it, brothers and sisters. 
This is it. May Allah give us tawfiq and tashir. May Allah bless us to uh, overcome these two great tribulations, the tribulation of lust and the tribulation of doubt. And the key to that, as we mentioned, patience and certitude. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be patient during these days we find ourselves in. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to enjoy the Eid. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala bless all of you and all of your families. And uh, there's a lot more ground to cover perhaps uh, at some future time. We could continue this journey. We're only, we're still on the launch pad. We haven't even taken off uh, yet. Barakallahu feekum wa yataqabban minkum wa eid mubarak wa kul amin antum bi khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.